there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another awesome, beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge. It's gonna rain, it's gonna rain in about an hour. And I've been moving and shaking, trying to get chores done here on the farm before this shipping container comes. So today's video is all about what to expect if you decide to buy a shipping container. And this shipping container is the tall shipping container. It's nine and a half feet tall. It's eight feet wide, I'm told. It's sealed from the elements and it's 40 feet long. It's a monster shipping container. We're gonna use it for storage here on the farm, whether it's hay, tools, or just stuff that we don't need, but once a season, we're gonna stuff it all in the shipping container and have some fun. It's actually going to be used for a tool carriage up here where we're building the mega shop. So come along as we teach you what it's like to buy a shipping container, whether you want to use it as a bug out shelter, a storage shelter, or whether you want to bury it and use it as a storm shelter. Awesome. Lots of stuff to learn today. Let's have some fun. Woo! Woo! Stony Bridge. First things first, we're gonna get in the red Yoda here and we're gonna drive up and show you guys, ooh, if I can get in here, <laughs> where we're gonna put the container. Uh, you really need to have your stuff together when it comes down to getting one of these containers delivered out to your house. So especially if you don't have heavy equipment like I have to move it around. So where we're having it dropped is not gonna be its permanent home today. I will be moving it around, shuffling it around, and getting it all leveled up in the perfect spot. My idea is to take these trusses that I have up here and weld those trusses to the top of the shipping container and make myself a sawmill shed. So that'll be really cool. We're gonna drive up here and I'll show you where we're putting it. So I'm up here behind my house and this is the equipment yard. This is the gravel lot for the equipment yard. It's a lot of gravel. This is nearly an acre of rock. And where I'm thinking about putting the shipping container, it's gonna be a spot that's gonna be easy to level. In other words, he's gonna pull up here, he's gonna whip it around, and we're gonna back in right beside my gooseneck trailer right here. Now the shipping container will slightly be tilted downhill, okay, towards uh, away from the entrance. In other words, you don't want it sitting up like this. In case it does leak at the entrance, the water will go way back in the back of the shipping container. The thought process behind getting a shipping container like this is that it's a watertight, insect tight, hopefully, and vermin prevention. In other words, you can't get uh, mice in there. So a mouse can go through a hole the size of a pencil and we wanna keep mice and rats out of it. When you've got a farm, when you've got animals, when you've got hay, like what's sitting over here, and when you just have fields or woods, you're gonna have mice and they're gonna try to get into your equipment. So we're gonna use this thing for all sorts of awesome equipment storage. Right there is where it's gonna go. The mega shop is gonna go right here. So lots of work to go here on the farm. Let's just hang tight for a minute and wait for this fella to get here. Once he gets here, we'll show you how it all gets set off and we'll walk inside of it and show you what it's like. All right, guys, it's here. Awesome. <laughs> Holy crap, that thing is huge. Yeah.
guys. Pretty awesome process here. So this trailer is specifically designed for shipping containers and he's dropping it off. I'll post this fellow's phone number in case you guys want to deal with a local person versus one of these brokers. Awesome dude, very nice guy and a veteran. Very cool. So here's what we have. This is a nine foot, six inch high, eight foot wide shipping container. It's 40 feet long. Now, this is not a single trip type shipping container, okay? The price of this was 5,700 bucks. Used to be two or three years ago, you could buy these things for $3,000 all day long, but the cost of steel and the <laughs> availability of these shipping containers is going down, down, down. So I had to kind of pay through the nose to get it. However, when I get done with it, I'll easily be able to sell it and or we'll take these trusses over here and we're gonna build the sawmill shed right here probably. So I've got a little bit of work to do on my end this fellow that brought these out, it's from, he's got a, a ranch it's called Harris Ranch. So he farms ranches and he does this on the side to help make up the money. You gotta diversify if you've got a farm. What we got here, I've gotta raise this up on some blocks and we'll get it up off the ground so we don't get condensation from the difference in temperature and humidity from the ground to the inside of the container. So there's some work that I'll have to do. You'll see that stuff in a future video. Uh, there's also a specific way that you have to open and close the door. Uh, pretty simple, you just pull both handles at the same time, open this side, then pull both handles on the other side. If you order a shipping container like this, you need to make sure that it's fairly level this way, left to right, okay? It doesn't matter so much that it's level that direction. You want it to slope about two degrees towards the door so that water doesn't pool up down there and you start getting rust through and you get leaks. So this material is most likely not American steel, okay? So this is what we'd call Chineseium, I guess. But it is providing American jobs, as you can see. So. Uh, all the information here, and this fella provided me a warranty uh, with no leaks, no issues like that. Tells you exactly how much it weighs, 8,550 pounds. It's a heavy, heavy piece. So if you don't have a tractor or a heavy piece of equipment to move this, you may want to pay the extra cost. And I think he charges around three or 400 bucks to level it or whoever you have bring a shipping container to your place. That's what they're going to charge you. So um, I can do it myself. And it'll also give us some fun content showing you how to level this up. This is gonna make an awesome shed for the uh, sawmill. So we'll come off the top about 25 feet that way and the sawmill will go right up under here. I'll be able to bring logs up, load them on the mill and put them right there. Way, way cool. Let's open it up real quick and show you the inside and I'll show you the technique of opening the doors really quick. So when you're opening the shipping container door, there are two little hooks down here. We have to click that one open, okay? And this one, and we just pull them at the same time. Just like that, door's open. Oh, this is what it looks like inside with an echo. <laughs> uh, we've got a wood floor in here and it's just dark inside. Smells a little bit musty, but not bad. Uh, like I said, these are not near shipping containers. Uh, very nice inside. If I wanted to paint inside, I would, but I'm not really concerned about that. I'll probably just paint the outside. That is a big container. <laughs> this is probably the least expensive way to get things under roof in this large of a capacity. So you gotta think, you can buy a building like this 
for $6,500 to $7,000. You can put up a carport like we have over here for about $4,500 to $6,500, or you can put a garage in like we've got down at the uh, lower part of the farm but you don't get a solid floor. So there's no solid floor in that one over there. This seems to be the best option for storage on the farm. We can fill this with hay, tools, equipment, a, a small tractor will fit in there, zero turn, ATV, all that stuff will fit right in here. And it's a lockable, securable, moisture free environment. So something to consider. Also, don't bury one, okay? So I was talking to this fella and he does this for a living. He does it every single day. Do not, do not, do not bury yourself a coffin, okay? A 40-foot shipping container should not be buried without severe reinforcement. The sides and roof will cave in, and he said he's seen it many, many times. It is super, super dangerous, so don't bury one of these. If you're thinking about building yourself a bunker of some sort, don't do it with a 40-foot shipping container. He said he's seen people do it successfully with a 20 footer after they've reinforced it, but he didn't recommend it at all because this steel is not super, super strong. We're gonna put some heavy duty paint on this and this will be used. Uh, basically there's I-beam construction. There's I-beam runs across the bottom, I-beam across the top, and all the weight is supported by these piers or pillars on the end. The center section right here is only supported by the metal that's on the outside. So don't bury it, okay? I know I thought about it. You've thought about it probably if you're watching this video. Don't bury it. Guys, I hope you learned a little bit of something about uh, shipping containers and what you need to know in case you're thinking about getting one for your property, for your farm, for your backyard, for whatever. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you coming to the Stony Ridge Farm. Please pound that like button, jump in, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back. We got a lot more work to do. See you next time. Woo! We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife.